Uh, Wales's new national lockdown to combat coronavirus has come into force, uh, came into force following uh, the end of the country's 17-day fire lockdown. Pubs, bars and restaurants can reopen today, but the 10pm curfew for hospitality venues is still in place. Wales First Minister said uh, there are early positive signs that the firebreak lockdown has curbed the spread of the virus, Mark Drakeford said. The nation's level had now dropped from 250 cases per 100,000 to just under 220 and stressed it was vital people continued to work from home. Vaughan Getting, uh, Vaughan Getting is the uh, health minister in Wales. He joins us now. Mr Getting, good afternoon to you. I mean, just talk us through this. It's a, it's a drop. It doesn't sound like a great drop, though, in cases. Well, we've actually seen a rise up to this point, and it's essentially what we said was likely to happen. We saw a rise in cases after the fire, Rick, because that tells you much more about what was happening two to three weeks ago. We're starting to see what could be the impact of the fire rate with a plateau and then a reduction in cases. And the challenge will be to see if in another two to three weeks time we've seen this continued reduction, but also how people are choosing to live their lives. And that's the biggest challenge for all of us, not to throw away the hard work of the fire break. And it has been hard for lots and lots of people uh, and not to go back to the way we were living our lives. If we go back to what was happening before the fire break, we know we'll see a further exponential increase in coronavirus with all of the harm that that causes. Isn't that the problem, that inevitably there is an element of going back to some elements of, of normality, that the firebreak has finished, although, you know, curfews, 10pm, etc., that remains in place. But by just by definition of the firebreak finishing, people will go back to a semblance of normality and then the whole thing starts again. That's the, 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 the cynical uh, response to this, of course. Well, people will have more freedoms and, of course, they enjoyed in the fire break. So there will be more that people can do. But we're reiterating our point that where people can work from home, they should do. But crucially, the difference is, are we prepared to reduce the amount of contact we have with other people? Because it's close contact that the virus thrives on. So to see a fewer number of people and ideally a consistently small number of people, but also to spend less time with them. And of course, that is really difficult for us because we're social creatures, aren't we? It's most of what we value. Our friends, our extended families, and in many of the communities we have in Wales, we're really proud of the, the fact that that is the way people live their lives. But unfortunately, that's an environment that the virus thrives on. So we're asking people not to throw things away, to live your lives differently. But in doing that, you'll be playing your part in helping to keep Wales safe. So for future Eids, Hanukkahs, um, Diwali's and Christmases, there'll be more of us able to see each other, more of us to celebrate those future life events. Yeah. Are you, you're confident then that direction of travel will go southwards in terms of cases now? Well, we're positive that that's what we're on the start of. The challenge for all of us is, though, not to think and not to be complacent, whether that's the news about infection rates going down or about a virus. We don't want people to suddenly throw away what we've won by really hard work altogether. We're still in a real point of danger and a great collective national effort against the virus. Many of us are tired with the restrictions, frustrated with the challenges to our lives, but the virus isn't at all bothered by that. And that's where we have to focus on. It's a highly infectious and deadly disease. But it's not bothered about your policies either, is it, a virus, or anybody else's for that matter? Um, <laughs> it will do what it has to do, and then as, as people go back to normality, it'll, it'll it inevitably it's going to start again, isn't it? So the, the fire break, the lockdown, whatever we want to call these things, what's happening in England at the moment, the restrictions in Scotland, ultimately, unless there's a vaccine, Minister, nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to change. Well, this is the most difficult period of the year because we're moving into the winter, so the protections were afforded by summer with generally better weather. It is the most dangerous period of time in particular because this is we're going to the peak season for the National Health Service as well. But that to me reiterates why all of us need to look at what we're doing and to live our lives differently to avoid an exponential takeoff. It isn't just the harm that COVID causes. One in three of our critical care beds today are treating COVID patients. But the danger is if we go back to the way we were, then we'll see COVID crowding out other parts of the health service, people waiting longer for operations. It could impact on cancer care, as it has done already in some parts of England. So the risks are there for all of us. The government can only do so much. And I think we've been very clear about the risks we face. It is, though, about all of us choosing to live our lives differently 
And in that way, it'll be a very different sort of winter, very different sort of Christian New Year, but it does give us the best prospect of more of us looking ahead to the new year when we do hope that a vaccine will again change positively the way we can live our lives in the future. Paul Getting, thank you. Uh, Wales Health Minister with us here on Talk Radio. Um, your response to that, of course, that does, as he outlined there, uh, clearly depend on people adhering to the policy and making sure that they do um, adhere to social distancing and all that goes with it. Are you hopeful that will happen? Um, it's just interesting that on the back of you know, everything that's gone on, we, we're going to talk about a vaccine in a second. Apparently, it's got you know great initial, something like ninety percent success rate. Um, it hasn't entirely come out of nowhere. A few people are questioning. Hang on a second. Suddenly, there's a, a who mentioned this? Suddenly, there's a, a an American election, new president, not quite sworn in, and then bingo, a vaccine pitches up at the same time. Really, the great reset in action? Surely not. Uh, no, they've been working on this for ages, of course. Uh, we'll get some detail on that in a few moments' time. We're responding to the American elections too, not so much in terms of the elections themselves, although I am intrigued. I'd love to speak with you, depending on where you sit. Um, politically may well drive your answer to this. Uh, but do you think, come January, does anybody think that Donald Trump will remain in the White House? Because I'm looking at social media and all that goes with it and uh, the comments from, you know, mostly Trump supporters, clearly. Do you genuinely, absolutely, 100 percent believe that when we speak on this issue at the end of January, Donald Trump will still be in the White House? Does anyone really believe that? 0344 499 one thousand, And where does this election, because it might be an American election, of course, but this is the United States, the, 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 the police, if you like, of the Western world. What happens there does have a knock on effect. It does matter what goes on. Our relationship with America post Brexit, has that gone down the what's it uh, or will that thrive and be fantastic under President Biden? Oh, three, four, 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 nine, nine, one thousand.